Three, three two, two, one. one. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Living Color with Matt Woodward. This is uh, episode number 11. Uh, I'm going to do things differently today. Uh, I'm going to do a little music reaction and review to the new Run the Jewels album, uh, Run the Jewels 4. Uh, it was just released today. Today's June 3rd. Uh, yeah, June 3rd, Wednesday, June 3rd, 2020. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to do a little music reaction and review uh, and and uh, kind of come back and talk a little bit. I uh, don't really have like topics or anything planned just because there's obviously not, uh, not a lot more things important going on in the world right now than uh, what's going on in America kind of in general with the protests and, you know, and justice obviously for George Floyd and with the, especially with the developments today uh, with the uh, three other officers being arrested uh, in Minnesota or in the case, I should say. Uh, but we'll come back after the review and reaction and uh, talk a little bit about it, I guess. Uh, kind of kind of recap the weekend because the weekend was kind of a crazy one, at least since the last time I or recorded and put out an episode. Uh, but yeah, I'll come back for a little, uh, little chat after the review and reaction. Remember, you can uh, check out this uh, full music reaction and review on the same place that uh, you find these Living Color podcasts and shows uh, right on YouTube.com. Uh, I search Living Color with Matt Woodward. But uh, let's get right to the reaction and review. Run the Jewels. Run the Jewels 4. Release a couple days in advance. It's supposed to be released June 5th, Friday, June 5th, but it's released today, Wednesday, Wednesday, June 3rd. And you know what? I figured I'd just go for the reaction. Let's do it. All right, it is that time. Run the Jewels 4 by Run the Jewels, Killer Mike and LP. They're back. Couldn't have picked a better time. Obviously, couldn't have planned this. Wouldn't have wanted to plan this. But it it, it really could not have come out a better time. Run the Jewels 4, Killer Mike, LP. Let's do this. All right. 11 tracks, 39 minutes long. Track one, this is a track that was uh, released before the album, uh, and I actually did hear it before the album, uh, I'm sure, as I'm sure if you're watching this, you may have heard it, uh, and if not, you're in for obviously a, a real treat and a real tremendous opener of a track, Yankee and the Brave, uh, and like I said, track one of 11, so let's do this, Yankee and the Brave, run the jewels, we'll run the jewels forward, let's go! This week, going Yankee in the Brave. Let's go! Let's go! Tremendous start to the album. That beat by L or whoever is unreal. Uh, you hearing this out there, everyone? This is how you start a fucking album right here. Yankee and the Brave. That's track one of this. This is track two. Ooh La La featuring Greg Nice and DJ Premier of Gangstar. Let's go. Hey! I'm sweating already. I'm sweating. I fuck with this one heavy already. All right, track three, Out of Sight, featuring Two Chain. What? Nasty. Whoa. Ooh, two chains. Man, I'm loving this song right now. 
This is a this is a jam right here. Imagine pulling up beside someone at a red light, bumping this one. Damn. Track four, holy cow, my fuck. Holy cow, my fuck. Track four. This is not happening right now, is it? The production on this album right here. Wow. Holy shit. Holy shit. Woo! My mind is blown already. Four tracks in my mind is blown. Yep, I love this one. I'm not gonna lie. I love everything about it. That beat is nasty. Wow. Track five, Goonies vs. E.T. Yeah, I got some paper towel. I gotta wipe off for a damn second. Hey, I'm sweating. This is mind blowing stuff right here. I'm not gonna lie. Hey! Unreal. Woo! Holy shit. Track six, Walking in the Snow. This album is insane right now. Good lord, man. These beats. Yeah, how? Ooh. Shout out to Gangster Boo. This is crazy. It's almost like Killer Mike was laughing there, right? It's almost like they're laughing, right? Crazy, it's like effortless. Track seven, just featuring Pharrell and Pharrell Williams and Zach De La Roca. Oh. Yeah, this one's not bad at all. Okay, this is the shit I've been waiting for, Raya. Right that day LaRocca takes it to another level. Every time. That's unreal. Track eight. Never look back. 81 miles to the out down road. Never look back, never ever went slow. Wow man. I, I don't know if I should say it, but this the production on this album might be the best yet. It's so low and like deep. I don't know how they get it like that. I don't know how Ellen. It's unreal. Huh. Yeah, this one's just another solid one. Another solid track. Okay, track nine The Ground Below. Ooh. I'm loving this one, right? This is just This is just tough. Wow, man. This is uh, this is unreal. Woo! That is man, track 10. Pulling the pin featuring Mavis Staples and Josh Hom of Queens of the Stone Age. Uh. Mavis Staples. Ah, uh, that one's interesting. All right, we've reached the last track. A few words for the firing squad, radiation. 
Oh yeah, I think this is the one uh, LP was teasing. I think last week on Instagram, on his Instagram. Ooh, a little sax coming in. Ooh. Is that, is that Kamasi? Who is that? Terrence Barn, who is that? Wow. I'm loving this one right here. Wow, man. That's all I can really say is wow, really. This whole fucking album is just wow. It's not done yet. It's It's not done yet. Wow. Holy shit. <laughs> Speaking of holy shit. Holy shit. Are you motherfuckers hearing this shit out there? Holy fuck. Holy shit. That was incredible. That was amazing. <laughs> that uh, that was Run the Jewels Four by Run the Jewels. Uh, I think I said before, uh, or like first couple songs in, I'm sweating. I was gonna take the hoodie off, and I just kind of found my groove there after a while. Man, that shit was insane. Uh, I was gonna mention before that you know which Run the Jewels album of of the four now are my is my favorite or of the three previous and uh you know personally for me uh the third run the jewels album is my favorite album of the three uh and that's just because i kind of you know i I wasn't aware of run the jewels on run the jewels one and uh you know i i i heard about run the jewels uh during run the jewels two and obviously with like the reception it got and then their live performances and the music videos and obviously the beats and lyrics and the features and, you know, the whole everything, you know, just the the timing of it, just, you know, the the relationship, obviously Killer Mike and LP have uh, and their message, obviously, uh, of one of, you know, of positivity, but at the same time, you know, not taking shit. And uh, fucking shit up when it needs to be fucked up. And, you know, it's an important one, especially during uh, today's time. And this this album is phenomenal, man. You know, if I had to rate this, this would easily be, you know, an 8 out of 10 easily. I would almost put it in the 9 out of 10, you know, to be honest with you. It'd be at least 8.5 8. to 9 out of 10 for me easily. This is another, you know, staple body of work for Run the Jewels. It's... Like I like I mentioned during the uh, the reaction to it, you know the the production in this album might have been I, might have been the best, you know. I think you know Run the Jewels too might have been not the most catchy per se, but you know the most earwormy or you know like a uh, you know where it's like instant where it hits you instantly. I think Run the Jewels three was more of a you know the beats still hit you instantly and something you can you know just kind of you know jump around to obviously if if you're if if without even hearing the words let alone hearing the message and all of a sudden it's just like you're it's like every you know it all it's it's a whole it's like a fireball you know uh and with this one run the jewels four i think uh you know you hate to say it's all in one uh because I, I wouldn't say it's that at all i almost say it's something new you know, it's almost like a, a newer sound because it's like it's like it's it's the same sound, but it's like a it's a deviation from it a little bit, I guess. You know, like I like I kind of mentioned, I hadn't really heard like the you know you you've 
a lot a lot of LPs production and you know the Run the Jewels production is a little you know lower end based I guess you know a lot of bass you know the kick drum heavy and you know this you know the the distorted guitars heavy almost heavy metal guitars excuse me almost like Rage Against the Machine guitars really uh, or that influence it's not really like to say that you know they're biting from Rage Against the Machine just like that kind of uh, you know influence I guess. Uh, the guitar sound and it's just like this is almost lower than what a normal run the jewels album would be i guess lower you know octaves or whatever you know and it's it's i thought it was phenomenal i really did uh and like i said yeah i would easily rate this easily 8.5 8. 9 out of 10 you know this is this is phenomenal if not even higher than that you know this is like this is one of those uh one of those ones where it's like you also got to take in the timing of its release and, and the messaging and the lyrics and, you know, uh, and not only com- coming off of, the, you know, Killer Mike's uh, damn near iconic press conference that he gave, the you know, this past weekend uh, in Atlanta, uh, that like eight and a half minute speech, I believe it was, eight or nine minute speech, pretty much off the top of his head, you know, just free flowing and just straight from the heart, you know, and, uh, and, and it's kind of like, you know, I hope this is the one that, you know, not to say Run the Jewels isn't popular because I do believe they are popular. Obviously, they're going to open for Rage Against the Machine on on tour. But, uh, and, you know, they've had, they've had headlining tours for years now and, you know, had, you know, high profile slots on, you know, you know, big festivals around the world. So they're, they're, they're a big group. Uh, but, you know, this is something that should catapult them into like, you know, the upper echelon of especially hip hop duos and rap duos. You know, uh, there's just no one making music like Run the Jewels right now, obviously. And no one has been previously and probably no one ever will after this. You know, it's, it's such a unique sound and like they just perfect it every single time. And uh, obviously, you know, this, you know, this for me, this couldn't be better. I, I don't think there's really one fault, one bad song on this album. You know, and that's just my this is just my first reaction and first listen to it. Uh, besides Yankee and the Brave, and I, I had ha- I had heard Oh La La or Ooh La La before uh, the album, but even still, you know, these are tracks I'm going to be bumping for a while, just like I bumped, you know, RTJ2, RTJ3, and even RTJ tracks, the re- you know, the first one. I'd bump them all, you know? Uh, so, I love this album. Uh, I hope you check out this album. Shout out to Run the Jewels, Killer Mike, and LP, and, uh, Everyone who worked on this project, man, you guys perfected this. This is a masterpiece again. You know, four for four couldn't be better. Run the Jewels. Run the Jewels 4. Hope you guys check them out. I hope you enjoy. And I hope you listen, and especially listen to the words and the messaging. You know, that's because that, that's almost, that's, there's no, no one better at it really right now than Run the Jewels. But that's that. Run the Jewels 4. Bow Run the Jewels. All right. I hope uh, everyone checks out that uh, album, Run the Jewels 4 by Run the Jewels. And uh, that reaction and review that I just did there, uh, obviously I didn't put it into this uh, little podcast part of it, but uh, or the show part of it, but... Uh, I hope you check that out. Uh, and, uh, yeah, a really phenomenal album. Couldn't have come at a better time, really, especially, uh, you know, Killer Mike and LP delivering that powerful message, you know, and the, and the music is it's unbelievable. So check out Run the Jewels, Run the Jewels 4. Uh, especially Killer Mike coming off that uh, pretty much iconic press conference that he gave in Atlanta uh, this past weekend. To sort of uh, an attempt to kind of quell the rioting, I guess you know uh, that was going on and, and looting that was going on in Atlanta, really. Uh, and and uh, Killer Mike is just—he's been doing it for years. Obviously, uh, not only is he a rapper, but he's an activist, and you know he's such a powerful voice for not only like the black community, but I think for people in general because uh, he's so not only is he educated, but he's just—he's smart on all facets. Like he. He knows what he's talking about, and you know, you know, he's coming from like a good place, you know. And I, he's he's a leader right now, and he, I think he's someone that people should, you know, look to really. Uh, 
you know, I think, uh, especially in times like right now, you know, this is like now more than ever, you need people like Killer Mike uh, to kind of, you know, not only give people like hope, but, uh, you know, to kind of remind them what the, what the message is and, uh, you know, to, I guess, uh, you know, kind of be like the man of the people, really, you know, just, he, you know, he was just showing up, he was literally just basically talking off the top of his head, you know, and, and it was so powerful and poignant and, you know, right on point, really, is what, what people really need to hear, and he was just free-flowing for eight or nine minutes, you know, and you don't hear something like that from politician or, you know, just even celebrities almost at this point, you know, you don't really hear that, you just hear like the scripted message and his BS and, you know, here's how you can help, and yeah, like, Sentence, putting out a link how you can help is great but you know you should put out your you should say something and use your platform and your voice uh and not script anything and actually you know tell, let people know how you feel and obviously that may might put put you at in you know at a you know uh an at risk position i guess you say cuz you might lose fans and followers and business ventures if you don't say the right thing or you know, come out as strong as people might feel or if you might get social media backlash. But I feel like in this day and age, if you're even remotely educated and even remotely have, like, good intentions, I feel like you should speak out because this is – this what what's happened in the past week, you know, it's really just a human – it's – not only is it a human issue, it's obviously – I think it's – I think it is obviously – it's a it's a multi, it's multifaceted issue, you know. Uh, there, it is a Black Lives Matter issue. You know, uh, you can't just see all these black people getting killed by cops, you know, unjustly and unarmed and on camera, you know, in broad daylight for, you know, petty crimes, damn near petty crimes. And even if they weren't, it's not the crimes that, you know, should result in the death penalty or the death sentence and, you know, in public or any shit like that or anywhere, you know, and, uh, I just think, yeah, it's, it's, you know, you should, people should speak out about it, you know, and it's, it's a, you know, I think it's obviously, it's a policing issue too, you know, uh, especially you're seeing like the President Trump, you know, trying to enact, I believe, like, uh, some, something from like, you know, the Act of 1807, that's Insertion Act of 1807, I believe, in, uh, where he can use like military force, you know, against the people or, you know, he he's talking about trying to call in the mil you know possible national guard in the cities where governors aren't taking it as you know seriously the rioting and looting but you know even the president is trying he's he tries to distort the message all the time you know that's that's almost what he does like that's almost what it seems like his goal is at this point or what it has been for years but uh you know i just don't understand like how how can people be so like wrong on this issue and even drew Brees. uh you know that that came out today that he kind of gave a very controversial opinion uh, on this whole issue, uh, where he I'm gonna, I'm gonna look I want to be exactly sure what he said, uh, but he basically he let's see he said um, he said I will never agree with anybody disrespecting the flag of the United States of America or our country. Which okay, obviously, Drew. That that's all that makes sense. Uh, no one's trying to disrespect the flag, and no one's trying to disrespect you know the troops or anybody who served for our country, anything like that. That's not the point. That's not what people are protesting in the streets for. People are protesting in the streets because time after time, black men specifically are being unjustly killed by cops, you know, on camera, with no weapons or anything, for petty crimes. And people are protesting because time and time again, the, the, the message of the movement gets swept under the rug uh, and it gets, you know, poached basically. And, and it gets poached by, you know, even just things like rooter, uh, looters, rooters, uh, looters and rioters uh, from this past weekend who are just basically not really a part of the Black Lives Matter protests or, you know, the protests for justice for George Floyd. They were just, you know, taking advantage of a uh, of a protest where they can kind of blend into the crowd and basically cause anarchy and destroy buildings and, you know, loot and riot, you know, and, and cause, 
you know, chaos in the streets when, you know, most of the people are out there just protesting and, you know, doing it peacefully. You know, they're not trying to try, they're not trying to clash from the, you know, the cops or anything like that. Cause that's not what the, <laughs> that's not the issue. The issue people that it's not supposed to, you know, this isn't supposed to be a f- fucking war against the police. That's not the point. And then you just see the president who tries to kind of make it like that, where he's like, you know, uh, when when the looting starts, the shooting starts. When he says shit like that. And then you just see people say, he didn't say that. It's like, that's literally what he tweeted. What do you mean that's not what he said? Like, how, what do you, so I just, I just don't understand anymore. Yeah. I just don't know why people try to justify anything and like, just, you know, any, even, even like the George Floyd murder, you know, just, well, you don't know. He might've been drunk, you know, especially the, uh, what is it there? I'd uh, say my camera's dying here, but yeah, no, I, uh, you know, e- even with the 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 county medical examiner basically giving a false autopsy and saying that George Floyd didn't die by asphyxi- you know asphyxiation or you know by choking to death or you know getting his blood cut off of the brain, but then the family had to go go secure you know two private autopsies. Uh, and those those autopsies found that he did die from cut off to the brain to the brain and asphyxiation, you know, from from pressure to the neck. Obviously, anybody with a fucking brain who watched the video would have known that, you know. So, uh, and that that was sort of a development today that the three other officers did get arrested. Thank God, you know. It's like now they need to be charged, you know, charged and put in jail for years. Obviously, all four of those fucks. Especially that Chauvin guy, his charge got adjusted to second degree murder, or bumped up to second degree murder, as it should. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, throw lock him away, throw you know, throw the keys away. Uh, and you know, after this weekend, there was a ton of rioting and looting. Uh, but it seems like the past couple of days, you've seen like you know, cops try to come out and you know, make the better of best of things and kind of put down the batons and just march with the people and hear, hear what people have to say. And that's the most, that's what you look for. That's what the, that's what police should do. They're, they're supposed to be leaders in the community. And you know, that's all we can look for at this point. I think, uh, it's just look for more leadership in our communities. Uh, but that's kind of where I'm going to leave it right now. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to touch on it too much cause I'm going to try to do another uh, show here at the end of the week. Uh, probably record on friday this is wednesday that i'm recording this so i'll probably record it in a day or two and uh give more of my thoughts uh and kind of see how things develop in the next 48 hours or so till i record and uh and just just give more of my thoughts on the whole whole movement across america and uh where things can go from here uh, and how we can make things better for you know for the people that are let you know the least heard and least represented i guess you know uh um especially in all this but you know people of color black people everybody you know that that's what we need to be hearing their message and their voices obviously right now uh and that's the most important thing so thank you for listening and watching i appreciate it i'm sorry my camera died here at the end uh but I appreciate you listening to the end if you did. Uh, I will be back on Friday or this. Yeah, I'll be back on Friday, but I'll, you know, be back for the weekend for you. I'll post it by the weekend. Uh, we'll have another episode besides this one up for you by the weekend. So, yeah, thank you for listening, watching, wherever you may be. I appreciate you. I hope you're doing well. Uh, and I hope to see you this weekend for Living Color with Matt Woodward. Signing off.